So here's the setup. Three headphones walk into a bar. The Hi-Fi Man Edition XS, the Sennheiser Mastrop HD 6XX, and the Grado Hemp headphone. Now, there are three open back designs, but only the XS is really the subject of today's review, but it gets compared to the Sennheiser and, and the Grado. But first, before we get deep into the XS, I just want to tell you, I, I kind of have a history with Hi-Fi Man headphones. I'm a big fan. And this one, the XS, reminds me of the HE-1000. Now I have an original pair, not any of the later versions. And I also compared that, the HE-1000, to the XS. But let's get into the details of what the XS is, other than saying it's a planar magnetic. By the way, it has magnets on both sides of the uh, diaphragm, on the outside and the ear side. So that's kind of cool. And the magnets have been specially designed to reduce edge diffraction and reflection. So they're more transparent to the sound of the diaphragm. So over the, over the course of this review, I used just two headphone amplifiers. The Pass Labs HPA-1, very high-end, great sounding headphone amplifier. But to be on the portable side, I also use it with an iPhone 11 Pro hooked up to an AudioQuest Dragonfly Red, which is a DAC slash headphone amplifier. And I will discuss the sound later on in the review. But before I get to the sound at all, I have to make extra special mention of the comfort of this headphone. It is extremely comfortable, which is a big surprise because it's not a light headphone. It weighs 14.3 ounces or 405 grams, which is not light. But you know what? I wore this headphone for hours at a time and I had no fatigue whatsoever from clamping pressure, which was very, very moderate. And it's a very open sounding headphone, but because it's so open, I think that adds to the comfort that you hear the world around you. Uh, which I really, really like. I don't like that closed-in feeling of wearing headphones. So this headphone doesn't give me any of that. It's, it's easy to forget it's on your head. It is that comfortable. The ear pads are very plush and very thick. And they just, because they're oval, they're not oval-shaped, they're ear-shaped. And they conform to the contours of a human ear much better than round headphones or ones that are ovals. This one really, uh, I have fairly large ears and it didn't touch any of my outer ear when I was wearing the headphone. And that adds tremendously to the comfort. Now, if you have gigantic ears, yeah, I guess it's gonna, it's gonna touch your ears. But in any case, I can just tell you what I experienced and comfort rated very, very well. Oh, and then the, for the headphone cable, it's very soft, very supple, not at all prone to kinks or any weird stuff. The, the amplifier end is terminated with a 3.5 millimeter plug, and you also get a 6.3 millimeter adapter. And at the uh, ear cup end, the, cable, the cables are terminated with 3.5 millimeter plugs. They fit very securely. The cable was fantastic. No problems at all with the cable. Oh, and as for uh, other details, it comes with a one year warranty. Service is handled in the United States. Oh, the headphone is made in China, but service is handled in the U.S. for U.S. buyers. And there's also a U.S. warehouse. So the stuff that you buy here isn't coming directly from China. As for the sound, well, the sound is right. It sounds correct. It's very open sounding headphone. Great highs, really exceptional detail and air. Uh, beautiful. Mid-range is a very neutral, maybe tending towards warm. And the bass is fast and deep. Very, very clear. So as for the music portion of this review, I started with this one, the Young Bach. And the thing about great organ recordings played over great speakers or headphones is you get this sense of the organ pipes breathing, the air moving through the pipes. And this one, the excess, absolutely nailed that quality. As for the HD6XX, it presented a softer, let's say blurrier sound, that breathing, that air moving, it was there, but it was subdued through that headphone. The bass, the mid-range and the bass were, were really good. Again, not as clear as I was getting out of the XS. I mean, the HD6XS is a terrific headphone for the price, which is I think around $200. 
is phenomenal. But I needed to get a Sennheiser in this comparison, and that's the only one that I had that made any sense at all. Switching over to the Grado Hemp headphone. I love that headphone for its open sound stage, and I would say it sounds it wasn't quite on par with the XS, but it was really good. Uh, the detail, the clarity. Uh, oh, I was playing um, Quiet Scotsy, Philip Glass's score to this film, Quiet Scotsy. And the, the, the tr there's some parts with brass and trumpets, and the, the, the transients were way better on the excess, but the Grado wasn't that far behind. I mean, it was better than the Sennheiser, uh, and, but the bass didn't go as deep, and it wasn't as well controlled as I was getting out of the XS. Then, then it was time for this one, the Sarah one with Count Basie. Now, I don't have a lot of Sarah one in my collection, and this was one of those that was temporarily lost over the years, and I found it, and I said, oh, I gotta include it in this review. And her voice is so powerful and so soulful, and it's just so in control, just incredible. And the orchestra is, wow. All of that played so well over the excess. The clarity to hear into the sound stage and everything was really, really a joy. The uh, Sennheiser did okay, it was good, but it missed some of that. It missed some of that tactile quality, that, that transient over from the brass wasn't happening as well. Um, it just kind of pulled me out a little bit of the sound. The Grado was a tad better. I mean, all three are lovely sounding headphones, but the, the excess just kept coming out on top because it was the most alive sounding. And I gotta say, for this much detail, I never felt like it had too much and it was fatiguing to listen to. And that's a great balance to have that you're getting plenty of detail, but you don't feel like it's just kind of hammering your ears with too much, too much resolution, too much clarity, too much brightness. It's, it's not a particularly bright sounding headphone, but the treble detail and air and there's like real substance to the treble that I just absolutely love. So as for the uh, listening sessions over the phone, over the iPhone 11 Pro with the Dragonfly Red, the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red headphone amp slash DAC, well, I played this one, this Johnny Greenwood score for Phantom Thread. It's a film score. Uh, the film was by Paul Thomas Anderson. And it's, it's, it has more emotional range, I would put it that way, than his other scores. Uh, and it's, it's mostly strings and just this, the depth and space and the, the different lines happening in the strings over the excess were just so well played. Really, really assumptive. I'm sitting here list, listening and thinking, I'm listening over a freaking phone streaming Copas. And yet, I got, I got no complaints. This headphone just never, it never made me feel like, eh, you know, enough. I got to ease back on this. No, it just kept pulling me in, I kept listening to more and more stuff. And then I dialed up some uh, Led Zeppelin 1 and 2. They're peak. I'm sorry they peaked so early, but that's, that's just my, the way I hear it with Led Zeppelin. But anyway, I was playing Led Zeppelin, and you know, they're not the best recordings, but this headphone can totally rock out. This was with the uh, Dragonfly Red, so it wasn't sucking up a lot of power to do, it, to do its thing. And I was a happy camper. You know, let's, you know, the thing about a um, whole lot of love with the, the swirling around part, it was out of my head. It was so much fun to listen to. It's still fun to listen to. It's over 50 freaking years old, and I'm still digging that music. And the excess was, was making me happy. Then it was time to go back to the Pass Labs HPA1 headphone amplifier and do this comparison between the original Hi-Fi Man HE1000 and the Edition XS. They look kind of similar, right? Um, there's uh, seven years, they're seven years apart because the, the original uh, HE1000 came out in 2015. Doesn't seem that long ago. But anyway, I'm comparing the two. Now that headphone, when it was new, was $3,000, a lot of money in 2015. And it was, it just blew me away then. And, and to be honest, I haven't played it that much over the years. So when I sat down to do these comparisons, I was like, how is this gonna work? How will the old headphone differ from the shiny new Edition XS? Well, it still sounds like a much better headphone. The, the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 is just so real sounding and so 
unheadphone like and so organic. It's not, uh, it doesn't hit you with resolution, it's just there. It is a high resolution headphone, it's a clear headphone, it's a fuller sounding headphone. It is in every way better. And I was playing this Sinatra, Only the Lonely, and I'm looking at the, I'm listening to the recording and I'm looking at the booklet and I was like, yeah, this, this recording was made in 1958. <laughs> Damn, it's old. It's so there. It's, a, it's one of those wow experiences to listen to this thing because the orchestration, it's with a big orchestra and Frank is just on top of it and it's just stunning. The beauty in that recording. So I'm listening to it over the HE 1000 just reveling in the sound. So I unplugged the 1000, popped in the Edition XS and what would happen? Well, it shrank. It got smaller, thinner, uh, harder sound by comparison to the HE 1000. So yeah, it may be old but it isn't in the way man. It's still a killer headphone. But you know, as I went back and forth and compared the two, they have that hi-fi man sound and they're both really comfortable. They have those uh, ear-shaped ear pads. And uh, yeah, but I'm not here to tell you that the new one, the XS sounds pretty much like the HE1000. No, it doesn't. So if you got the bucks to spend, because I think the current version of the HE1000 is about $3,500. If you can spring for that, and there are, there are of course models in between, uh, you can move up the food chain at uh, Hi-Fi Man and get better sound. But this one, <laughs> the Edition XS, I never felt like I was missing out as I was playing it. When I, most of the time I just listened to it on its own because I was enjoying myself so much. So I did these comparisons and I think it held up really well compared to the Sennheiser HD6 XX and the, Hi and the Grado Hemp headphone. The Grado, by the way, is really, really good. It's lighter. It's so light. It is really comfortable. Some people find Grado ear pads kind of annoying. I don't. These are the flat ones. They're not the bowl-shaped ones on this Grado hemp headphone. I find those more comfortable. But anyway, the Grado is still a real contender. It's open, it's really light, and I find it really comfortable. That's where we are with this review of the Hi-Fi Man Edition XS. If you're looking for a serious high-end headphone and you're in the $500 price range, you should definitely listen to this headphone. And uh, I don't remember if I actually pre-announced this, but yes, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Adam is a 62-year-old native of Westchester County, New York, but he's now an hour west of St. Louis. His system resides on the lower level of his home on a carpeted concrete slab floor. The room measures 15 by 30 feet. As for the gear itself, he has a VPI turntable with an Ortofon black cartridge. His beloved 20-year-old Rogue Audio 99 Super Magnum 2 preamp was recently sent back to Rogue for the latest update and retubed it with new old stock tubes from Upscale Audio. On the digital side, he's running an iFi Zen Blue streamer and an Oppo 103 disc player. Both feed a Musical Fidelity MX DAC. Power amplifiers include a QSC Class D amp with onboard DSP for the subwoofers and a pair of Odyssey Audio Stratos Kismet monoblock amps for the main speakers. He has several Furman power conditioners and for room treatment, RPG Skyline diffusers and absorbent panel room treatments. Those subs are refrigerator sized nine foot transmission line enclosures housing 15 inch aluminum cone woofers from Dayton Audio. Thanks to the QSC having onboard DSP, the crossover on the subs require no passive crossover components. The speakers are DIY affairs utilizing a dipole array of air motion transformer mid-range drivers supplemented by a ribbon tweeter. The seven inch woofers are in heavily damped transmission line enclosures. Crossovers were custom made by Bill at DS Tech Labs in Florida. Adam, that is something else. Okay, so we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am 
the Audiophiliac, and this is my show. If you like it, please hit the like button on the episodes you're enjoying and consider subscribing if you have yet to do so. We're at 209,000 subscribers. That blows my mind. If you'd like to support the show, here's how to do it. You go to patreon.com slash audiophiliac. I will link to that below and that's where you can uh, find out how to help out. Oh, and of course, you know I got to plug this. I have a podcast. And even for people who are not into podcasts, I got you covered. I have a website just for my podcast. And there is a link to that in the description. So if you don't have Apple uh, Podcasts or Spotify, or any, you don't have to. You can just go to my website and listen to the podcast there. But if you're a podcast person, yeah, I, I'm on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and uh, the radio, iHeartRadio, it's kind of everywhere podcasts are heard. <laughs> and with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.